Hello minions, Wheezy here and today I'm just going to show you uh, a gameplay, a full gameplay from the Call of Duty Cold War Alpha and I'm going to talk to you about my thoughts on Call of Duty Cold War. Um, I've been, I want to get some more content out and uh, produced videos take a while so it's been a while since I just kind of like let you watch a gameplay, oh, because I'm hadoukening my microphone, kadooken. Um since I let you guys watch a gameplay and uh, just kind of talked during it, so we're going to give that a shot here. Um, for those of you who've been watching my streams, I guess you've probably been getting, getting enough of that. But anyway, uh, Call of Duty Cold War Beta. Um, the first thing I want to say starting out is that I'm not going to be um, making any like final judgments, obviously, on, on Cold War because it's not a final game. Um, it's a beta, and so that's why this is impressions and kind of like what I think... Uh, the game, what kind of potential the game's going to have when it comes out. And overall, I'd say that from the history of um, just Treyarch games and just the way Call of Duty typically is polished over its entire life cycle, I know that at some point in its life cycle, Black Ops, or Cold, yeah, Black Ops Cold War, Cold War is going to get to a healthy state. Right now, there are a lot of kind of gameplay and balance issues I want to call attention um, just to show you it's a little bit a little bit beta but the game's coming out in a what less than a month I think so um, some of these things be interesting to see how much they get fixed right out of launch versus how much has to be fixed later but I try to slide through this window and I get fucking stuck <laughs> I guess I apparently attack slide through that unbroken window not the best thing in the world, and this is kill confirmed. I was like, oh, I want those tags, but I literally couldn't move. I tried going prone. You'll see it'll pop up and say prone blocked. Like, I couldn't prone out. I couldn't stand up. I couldn't sprint. I couldn't do anything. <laughs> um, and somebody came back and was like, oh, you're just camping here, probably. Um, anyway, so there's still some some bugginess. Um, like I said in one of my other videos, this is probably the the beta is the beta I've played in a while, especially in Call of Duty. Um, and by in a while, I mean the last time I played a beta that was really bad was Medal of Honor. Like, you know, uh, before Warfighter, when they did Medal of Honor but did it in a modern setting. Um, that alpha, like, the textures wouldn't draw in. It was pretty, pretty wretched. Um, this is a very beta, beta. Um, I had the game crash a couple of times. I had a lot of connection issues. Um, there's still some strange balance decisions. I mean, overall, I, you know, I, there were fun moments, but overall I did not enjoy playing the beta to the point where the beta got extended through Tuesday, and I'm recording this now on Wednesday morning, and I didn't even play the beta yesterday on Tuesday. I played it a little bit on Monday, maybe even just like a match or so. I may not have even done that. For those of you who saw my Cold War streams, um... Well, my last Cold War stream I did, I ended that stream being like, I just can't play anymore. Like, I'm frustrated and I'm not enjoying it. Like, and that was kind of like, that's it. Like, I'm, I already decided I'm not going to make a judgment on Cold War during the beta, right? I'm going to get the game. I already pre-ordered it. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to be playing it. Um, we'll see what the final game does. But as far as the beta was concerned, it's like, I don't have to worry about going through and doing more unlocks. I'm not trying to get, like, breakdowns and stuff. I just, I just wasn't having fun the connection issues the balance issues um snipers got it seems like at the beginning of the beta the snipers auto aim got turned way down it was almost unusable for me i'm not a great sniper anyway but then towards the end they got turned back up i didn't reuse them to see if the auto aim got turned back up but people were definitely a lot more effective with snipers um later in the beta so i, I don't know there's there's there just is a bunch of things about this game that are just not really enjoyable right now. Um, so we'll see what the final game does. Uh, I think the campaign looks pretty, pretty cool. I'm a, uh, you know, I I do like a good single player campaign. Um, I'm I'm kind of you know I'm an old school video gamer, so I played old school video games and uh, back before multiplayer was a thing. Uh, one of the first multiplayer games <clears throat> I ever played online. Uh, on a console at least, was when I had my PlayStation 2 with its PS2 network adapter, and uh, that was when it was the original big PS2, and you had to plug the network adapter in the back in the expansion slot, it was an add-on, um, and SOCOM, US Navy SEALs, 
I think it was the first one, SOCOM 1 or SOCOM 2, was the first game that, like, online multiplayer. And, like, I remember being in my dorm room in college um, and playing SOCOM online for the first time. And, like, my very first game, uh, the very first time I killed someone or got killed by someone, the, my head, the, the chat was, like, a 10-year-old swearing at me. So <laughs> it was a very, like, perfect first online console gaming experience where i like how first of all this was back when like how does a how does a kid that young have a ps2 with a network adapter with internet access this was like 2000 and uh god i'm gonna date myself 2003 maybe 2004 like it was not console gaming was like online was not like a big thing then so like i had my dad kind of enabling my video game addiction um, and that's how I had a PS2 and a network adapter, and I had my college internet connection. Like, oh, I'm at university. Like, I've got, I've got internet here that's that's fast. Um, I'm getting sidetracked. The point being that um, I've been around. Was there a point to that? That uh, I've been around online gaming, console gaming for a while now, and uh, yeah, I just. I have had fun with Call of Duty in the past and with online games in general and this I just didn't I just didn't have fun there were too many issues so I'm hoping that those issues get oh yeah I was talking about single player campaign um, you're watching this you're probably worried more about multiplayer um, yeah I just I don't know I'm I'm still hesitant I'm still a little bit worried this was in some ways this was better than the alpha and in some ways this was much worse than the alpha so some of the things you guys have probably seen me talk about already especially if you're watching the streams the biggest things that stand out to me, the graphics seem more modern warfare-ish. They seem like they're on the new engine. And I think it seems like they took all the assets and they dumped it on the modern warfare engine. The alpha felt very different animation-wise and graphics-wise. This feels very much like modern warfare, but with the Treyarch art style. That said, in the alpha on the other engine, and I'm just going to call it the other engine. I'm making this assumption. Maybe it's not a new engine, but that's the way it felt. That's the way I'm going to talk about it. On the old engine... Footsteps were fantastic. Like, they didn't sound super realistic. They were a little bit clumpy, like, doo -doo -doo. but you could tell from listening exactly where the footsteps were. And good, bad, or indifferent, right? It was accurate. And they would be able to turn the audio on that up and down by tuning it to make it more or less obvious. And I remember um, Ninja seemed like in the alpha it didn't really work. Like, you would use Ninja and people could still hear your footsteps um, and track you that way. Um, that's going to be a big part. That's been a big part of Call of Duty Modern Warfare, and I think it's going to continue to be going forward, um, is audio. But on the new engine, on the Modern Warfare engine, the footsteps feel exactly like they do in Modern Warfare, which is to say that they're inconsistent. Sometimes you don't hear people when they're really close to you. Sometimes you hear your own footsteps out or like right behind you as you're running, like you're moving and you hear your footsteps behind you and you turn and you look and it was your footsteps. Um... Sometimes you, people on the other side of a wall, you can hear them perfectly, you know exactly where they are. Sometimes you hear someone's footsteps and you can't discern which direction they're coming from. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of like sometimes good, sometimes bad. Um, I didn't realize I'd already talked to the end of this gameplay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw another video on here and, uh, and keep talking at you <laughs> because uh, I got more thoughts about this. Um, I just, I don't know, I... You can tell there's a lot of conflict here. So maybe I shouldn't extend this video because, let's be honest, I don't have much more to say other than I'm like hesitant about it. I'm going to do another video. Uh, this is obviously a multiplayer gameplay. Uh, I have a gameplay from um, from Dirty Bomb, from essentially the new war zone that I'll probably do another commentary on. So maybe I'll share a little bit more in that. Um, but I got a decent KD in this one, which was rare in the beta. Um, I think skill-based matchmaking is still a thing. Um, I do want to talk a little bit more about, about kind of the multiplayer stuff, so I'm going to throw a new video on here. Uh, this one I had is another game uh, from my stream. As in the background, you kind of see that my video popped up for a second at the beginning there. I'll go ahead and dump this into the game, and, uh, and we'll talk some more <laughs> about, uh, about maybe like... So now I want to get into kind of like what I expect from the gameplay. Um, I think as far as playing the game, I think there's going to be some really interesting things with the loadouts, the wild card system. Um, am I just AFK here? The wild card system is uh, going to be interesting. I think it's hard to tell without spending a lot of time with it, but I think there are going to be a couple of combinations of classes like 
happens in any Call of Duty game, um, where they are just kind of there's the best combo of things. Um, and I, I played around with a couple, but I liked having options. One, I had like the you know extra attachments on my weapon, so I had like a super weapon, which you know doesn't make it significantly better. And some of these weapons, it's completely wasted because you don't need seven attachments on a weapon. Matter of fact. I think that's probably going to be true for most of them, but it was kind of neat to play with. The one where you get two primary weapons, which also allows you to take multiple perks from the same category, like, that one's going to be really useful because it allows you to take, like, uh, Ghost and Ninja at the same time. Um, and, and I, like I said, audio is going to, like Modern Warfare, you know, in Modern Warfare multiplayer, as well as Warzone, but I'm talking mostly from a multiplayer perspective, cover Warzone stuff kind of separately because it kind of feels very isolated and, and compartmentalized for me for Call of Duty. Call of Duty has always been an online multiplayer kind of game. Audio has become really important. Most people um, are playing with headsets these days. Um, they become more accessible and affordable, so just people just have them more often. And as well as just the audio in general is better. You can kind of, to an extent, sort of hear footsteps pretty well um, even without headphones, but most people, especially if you're getting into skill-based matchmaking and stuff like that, you're gonna be playing with people at your skill level, and at that, at your skill level, audio is gonna be one of the big differentiators between who's better, because gun skill and tactics and stuff like that all play a role, but it's kind of a wall hack with audio when you can hear people sneaking up on you or, or moving across the map. You guys have probably seen it in a lot of my videos. Sometimes I'll literally be moving through the map and I'll hear footsteps and I'll stop and I'll pre-aim a door and I know someone's about to run through it and as soon as they walk through they're dead. I mean, fair or not, like that's, that's part of the gameplay and because of that, because of how uncontrollable that is on the receiving end, if someone hears you coming and you can't hear them, you're just at a huge disadvantage. The meta in mo Modern Warfare multiplayer, and I believe the meta in multiplayer for Cold War is gonna be silence, which means you need to have suppressors on your weapons. You need to be using, in Modern Warfare, it was the field upgrade dead silence. I found that was useful. I used it, you know, unless I was completing a challenge that required me to use something else. I used dead silence um, and trophy systems on the field uh, pro, using an RCXD. <laughs> Um, I actually kind of like RCXDs in this game, even though they're annoying. Well, I'll talk about that maybe in a minute. Um, but you need suppressors, you need your footsteps to be silent. So the fact that Ninja's a perk again, um, Dead Silence is a perk again, is going to make it kind of almost ind uh, indispensable. I felt like, like every class I had in Modern Warfare was Ghost as Perk 2, right? There was just nothing in Perk 2 that really gave you enough of an advantage. Like, one fewer kill for a kill streak isn't more valuable than staying off the constant UAVs, right? You will live longer to get more kills by not being on UAVs than you will by having, you know, by having an earlier kill streak. Um, stuff like that. There's going to be a meta in, in Cold War that's going to be very similar. There are going to be some builds you just can't really use because they put you at an advantage. If you don't have an, a suppressor and you don't have ghost, and probably if you don't have ninja, you're just going to be at a disadvantage. So those things come, become where any good build is going to be that. By the end of Modern Warfare, I was quick fix, ghost, and then perk three, sometimes I was using... Um, the one that, uh, whatever, the tactical one, the one that keeps you, um, that gives you an extra lethal grenade, what was it, shrapnel. Sometimes I'd use the one that makes you more resistant to tactical grenades. The third perk had a little bit, a little bit of flexibility with what you could use. I think by the end it was really just kind of shrapnel, having an extra frag was, was very helpful. Um, but it felt like perk one, perk one even had a little bit of flexibility, but by the end of it, quick fix just for me was, was better. Um. It gets to the point where some of that is like takes variety out of the game. Like there's there's some Call of Duty's I felt like where you could build any kind of build and it was kind of this rock paper scissors thing. With audio in the new Call of Duty games, it doesn't feel rock paper scissors. It feels like there are certain things you have to have, and if you're not using them, you're handicapping yourself. It's very similar to Warzone, right? If you're not using a suppressor in Warzone, you're ringing the dinner bell anytime you fire your gun because you show up on the radar, right? It's the same thing. Um, in this. One thing I will say is towards the end of the beta I started playing with Assassin, um, the Assassin perk, which at first glance I was like it's where you get extra score for uh, killing people that are on a kill streak, um, which the description of it sounds kind of like, well that, uh, that doesn't sound like really that valuable. But what it does do is anytime someone who's on a score streak shoots 
or um, shows up on the radar from like UAV, they get a special like uh, dot on the map that's more obvious and it draws your attention. Um, and it almost feels like it gives you a more advanced kind of UAV picture. It helps you locate those people more easily. Um, so from that standpoint, it felt uh, like a really good perk, like almost having a little bit of a UAV as a perk. Um, so I'd like to play with that more and see kind of where that's going. But um, so so there are some good things. There there are going to be some some options that you can have. Um, it's getting to the point where I, I enjoy the multiplayer. I with I want to start like putting more effort into uh, getting on like um, building up people that I can play with more often. I've I've done a little bit of that where. Um, there's an app called GamerLink, which I'll probably do some videos on, where you can pick up people who are a little bit more serious as opposed to picking up just randoms and hoping that they're good. That would allow me to enjoy things like Warzone more. Um, playing randoms, playing with randoms in Warzone just is so inconsistent. If I'm going to be playing by myself, hop on for a little bit to have some fun. Multiplayer is the way to do that. Um, playing with friends on multiplayer would also be more fun. Um, as you guys know, that's kind of what this channel was originally built around. Um, but as those friends and stuff have like scattered to different platforms and fallen off and grown up and they have kids and don't play video games much anymore, which I can relate to, I, my, my video game schedule is much less flexible than it used to be. Um, it, it, it's, you know, you kind of have to triage what you're going to play and playing online multiplayer is a little bit more drop in, drop out, um, and less dependent on having people available to play. So. You know, a lot of the big people out there playing Warzone, especially the ones who stream a lot of Warzone and who play it a lot, have teams, have groups, because that's kind of the way it's meant to be played, not just because of the tactics, but it's just more fun, and it's just you, harder to be successful if you don't have that. Um, so it's kind of a self-selection kind of thing. So there are some modes that just lend themselves to you have to, you have to have a team or you don't play it. So I haven't been playing a whole lot of Warzone um, for that reason. So... So there's a lot to look forward to, I think, for Cold War. There's a lot of potential for it to grow and balance and improve. Like I said, I'm not going to make any judgment based on the beta. I'm not going to write it off. Um, the reason, since I did another RCXD, the reason I like the RCXD is really relatively easy to earn. And it's almost always at least one kill, sometimes two. And it's not so easy to earn that in like previous games where it's like every time you got two kills or three kills or whatever it was, some ridiculously low threshold, you get an RCXD. You can only earn it like a couple times a game just because it's got a cooldown and it still takes a little bit of effort to get. So I'll get maybe two in a game. Um, and, and you know, it's reliable and you can use it to flush out camping snipers sometimes. So um, I don't hate it as much as I used to and I'm, it's not been epidemic. People have been using a lot of the other score streaks. The, the score streak system and the fact that you can not get, you don't have to get a 10 kill streak to get a chopper gunner, you just have to get enough points to get there is in incentivizing a lot of people to not use, um, you know, the RCXD in the lower streaks. So I still don't like score streaks in general. I don't, I don't like that uh, people are getting things like um, attack choppers just kind of naturally at the end of games that they didn't otherwise have to get like five or six kills in a row for. Uh, it just kind of makes the ends of games a little bit kill streak spammy especially people using the attack choppers um, and stuff like that that's not like not like chopper gunner level but that like you'll pretty much get if you're playing the objective and playing decently you'll get 4,000 points you know you can get a, like I, I tried ran the war machine for a while which is 4,000 points and it's not super hard to get um, and then the attack choppers below that it's like 3,500 so yeah I mean there's there's not sure exactly where it's all going to fall out, um, but I'm optimistic. But I'm more optimistic than more, more than I'm optimistic about Cold War um, being a really solid Call of Duty game. I'm optimistic that there are going to be games coming up soon that I'm going to enjoy playing, and, and I don't think I'm going to be as hooked to Call of Duty multiplayer as I have been. Um, so. So yeah, uh, that's kind of my thoughts on Cold War, um, since that video's wrapping up there, and uh, my other video as my other self is, let me see, sneak that around, oh, look at me from my stream, sneaking back in there, <laughs> here, look, this to me, um, so yeah, uh, those are my thoughts, what are you guys' thoughts, I'd, I'd love to hear what you guys think, um, let me switch over, as I'm just staring at myself here, <laughs> 
Uh, I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts, uh, what you're looking forward to, what you're worried about, what you think they ought to fix or whatever. What did you guys enjoy the beta, play the beta, buying the game? Um, yeah, let me know. Uh, I'm going to be doing more videos. Like I said, I'm going to try and do one on a Dirty Bomb. And for those of you who hadn't seen, by the time I get this posted, my first episodes of... Um, I'm doing an Alien Isolation gameplay. Uh, I'm doing two. I'm doing it simultaneously, uh, since OBS records multiple audio streams. I'm doing one where I'm commentating. I'm talking as I'm playing the game, and then another version that's edited more cinematically, where I'm removed my commentary and I'm just like posting the gameplay, um, edited to where it's it's just kind of the core of the story, um, because I've been enjoying getting back into more single player games when I'm not in a mood to be competitive and tactical. Um, so like I just beat Last of Us 2 finally, which was fantastic. Um, and that got me thinking, man, I really wish I had recorded this entire gameplay so that I could go back and rewatch the story without having to sit down and play another 40 hours of gameplay to do it. Um, so Alien Isolation was one that was sitting on my shelf and I decided to pull it down and, and start kind of this process with that one. Um, I've got Jedi Fallen Order coming uh, from eBay in the next couple of days and then one of the next big ones coming up that I'm going to play story play with the Cold War uh, campaign, which isn't going to be like groundbreaking, but it'll be fun. Um, so I'll, as I'm going through the single cam player campaigns, I'll just go ahead and record them, post the commentated version and the, un and the un uncommentated version, just so for myself, I can have an archive of these gameplays if in case I want to go back and relive the story, as well as it should be entertaining at least when I'm playing through the game to, uh, to, to hear me jabbering as it goes. Um, so anyway, I've rambled on long enough. It's been already over 20 minutes. Um, and I did two gameplays instead of one, like I was hoping to on this. So um, subscribe if you guys want to see those videos, just so you guys, you know, can see more of that stuff. There's, I'm going to do a lot of stuff on the channel here. I'm, I'm working on rebranding um, and stuff like that. So there's going to be uh, some new directions, and I'm, I'm working on planning things out so that I can get more useful content out and not get feel like I'm just slogging through doing like weapon tactics videos. So there's gonna be a lot of good entertaining stuff coming. So, um, so be sure to stick around for that stuff. Also, I'm, I've been doing it with, as I've been posting these new videos, I also have sister posts on the website. So if you haven't gone to wheeziesgaming.com and check that out, go check it out. There's for some videos, especially like my weapon tactics videos, I've started putting additional uh, content like screenshots and stuff on there of the builds that I use so that they're easier to reference. Um, but I'll be putting game pages up there so you can eat more easily get to like if I want to see you want to see the videos for Cold War or Modern Warfare or when I do these, uh, I'm calling them story time uh, playthroughs for like Alien Isolation or Cold War single player or whatever I do for, for going forward. And hell, I'd like to go back and do, I even pulled this one out of the box. Um, I really am a Warhammer nerd, so I really loved playing the Space Marine uh, game, the campaign. The multiplayer was pretty fun, too. I posted a couple of videos of multiplayer from it um, back in the day, but that was such a fun campaign. I'd love to play back through it and record it so that I can share the campaign. But anyway, Bioshock, stuff like that. Uh, and, of course, new games coming out. You know, there's going to be a new uh, Horizon on the PS5 and the new Halo and... Anyway, enough ranting. There's stuff coming. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to keep doing, you know, I'm going to get back into the Wheezy's War College series and stuff like that. So there's uh, there's a lot in the works and a lot I'm going to try to do and, and systems and structures I'm putting in place to try and help me um, kind of get that stuff, a workflow that works, even though I still have a full-time job and other stuff to do. But anyway, I've said several times, it's like getting off the phone with my mom. I've said goodbye several times and, and we still haven't hung up. So... I'm going to do another video, and we'll talk more. But for now, I'm done. Wheezy out. Bye-bye.